Hello, uh, today I'm going to do one of my quirky picture paintings um, which people seem to really like so but I'm going to do it based on a certain area so this is going to be Glastonbury Tour so first of all I'm just going to pop a little just a guide for me of how big the tour is going to be not written in stone this we can always um, change that and then the tour has got a shape there but the rest of it is going to be houses along here trees probably some more houses mainly done with a flat brush but the only bit Bit which won't be done with a flat brush will be this tour here so initially I'm not even going to worry about colours um, if they're really not that important in this style so firstly let's get a bit of background colour in there let's get a bit of Uh, a bit French ultramarine straight away across there I think got a bit of Prussian blue in there as well actually but it doesn't matter okay so while that's like that just lift it up and I'm just gonna run a bit of water on here so it blends in now if you want to create some cloud effects, the, one of the, the greatest ways to do it is just with a handkerchief and just dab out a few clouds there. Make sure you scrunch that handkerchief up so you get lots of different effects on your clouds there. And have some clouds all the way there and now I can start lifting out bits of colour here and I'm happy that it's got a bit of a texture on but now I'll leave that to completely dry before I completely it dried and I'm gonna put my tool in here I'm using a it's in a Skoda Optimo Kalinski and it's uh, got a really, really sharp point on there. So I'm just going to use the same colour that I used for the sky because this is in the distance. That's just a little bit too blue that to be honest with us. Let's dull it down a bit with a bit of red in there. Okay, so that will be enough with that. Now with the flat brush, I'm just going to pull that down. So it goes to virtually nothing. Lifting that up a little bit just to allow some of this pigment just to run down a bit. So I'm just tapping on the edge. Just tapping the edge there with my brush. If you want a more defined bit, just use a corner of your brush there. I think that'll do. Now I'm going to just bring that down. And also, when you sometimes when you want to fade something out, you, you can still use your your clean handkerchief and just bring some of that out and that gives it a, a nice textured gradiated effect so in the background that's gonna gonna get some 
um, some trees. We use a little bit of Payne's Grey and a little, just a touch of orange for the background. So I'm just going to add a few like semicircles here. I'm not really bothered about what colours I'm using, I'm just picking up all sorts of colour here from my palette to be honest with you. I'm getting some oranges here. These oranges seem to contrast nicely with with that. So this is a, a Queen Acidron burnt orange. Let's find a bit of green somewhere. We'll find a bit of green. Okay, let's uh, let's pretend that there's a field there. So let's put a line across there. And I'll be really bold here with a bit of red as well. I think that's going to dry quite nicely actually. Let's put a bit of um, dark colour at the bottom so it blends nicely. So I'm just using the tip of this this flat brush, the corner bit, and just fetching it down a little bit. And because this is wet, it's running up really nicely. A bit, of color, a bit of color of purple in there. Don't be afraid of experimenting with these different colors. And I'll get a bit of this green in. It's a bit of um, sap green with a bit of olive green. And I'll do a big tree there. These trees are just big, big semicircles with your flat brush. We did pick a nice bit of colour up there actually, don't we? Let's let that dry for a bit. As you can see, I've just extended these trees a little bit here, not too much. But it's the same principle as what we did there. Now then, because this has dried much lighter than we put it on, we're able to use our colours and make some different... Let's have a go, let's put some red here. So I'm going to put some red rooftops. I'm going straight over that colour. I'm not really bothered about that. And, and, and a bit of quin acid on it. I'll tell you what I'm going to I want to break this up here. So I'm going to, so just to break that line of trees up, going round there. Otherwise it looks too uniform. And now let's get another colour in. Oh, that's lovely and rich and dark, isn't it? In fact, we use that for a chimney pot. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. And I think we use that for the underside of that. I like that there. And let's just use the edge of that and a bit of that. Now then, what I'm going to do, we use a damp brush. Not wet, just damp. So I'm going to squeeze some of that water on it and Track it down a bit, let's see what happens. See if we can destroy that edge here, see that? We're just destroying that edge. 
because I've not left it too long, although it's still um, it's still dried. We're able still to destroy it and put some shape of buildings in there. Right, let's get some other colours in, shall we? Um, Now we're doing a little bit of fine work now, so we'll use the finest tip that you've got. I'm going to use this one. So we're going to get a bit of Payne's Grey first. And maybe a little bit of this. This Actually, I think we'll get a bit of the um, burnt orange when I wrong. So just, with the very t just from the top, start a couple of spindles down there, on there. And where the branch meets the other branch, just add a little bit more, just press in a little bit and you'll get a, like a little bobble. And that's where the, the branches meet. And stretch them out like this. A bit of a bubble there. And you can cross them over like that. Now let's get a bit of a different colour there. I'm using Payne's Grey now. Trees in the distance, sir. Eh? And what we can do is see where I've got this trunk here. And we'll lift some of that off now. Now this part here, I think what we'll do with that is we'll turn that into a fence. It's a bit jaggedy fence. And then you get your nice I'll just blend that in, I think. Break up that line at the bottom. I'll just blend that down a little bit. a bit more green over here. It's a continuation of that field as is this part here. Just like we've got plain fields in the background here. Let that dry. Right, so now <coughs> let's get these trees sorted out. 
Uh, I'm using a bit of um, burnt sienna for some of these because I don't want them all to be very, very dark, some of these branches. I want them all to be of varying tones. Now we'll start getting the eaves in these um, these roofs here, particularly these ones here. So we're gonna use use a I'm gonna use a a uh, what size X and this colder again it's Primera Synthetico size six. It's a flat brush. And I'm going to use a mixture of burnt sienna and um, quinacetate burnt orange. Let's, let's try it from this one. Okay, so now I'm going to use a bit of gouache. Or gouache, as posh people say. Gouache. I just say it as I read it. It's gouache. So, to me, it's gouache. So, we're going to put some of these windows in. So let's start from this side. Let's contrast these windows nice. Look at that. And that one there. And they just stand out now against those dark gables. Just dried off those windows. Uh, so what you really need, need now is, a, is a, quite a thin brush. Quite a pointer little brush. Because you're going to use some very, very dark paint. Let's use some purples actually. Deep purple with some um, Prussian blue on it. So let's, I mean, all we're going to do is we're going to put four windows and just, just dot them like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And so on and so forth. Now we need people. We need people in our in our picture. So we're gonna do a couple a couple of little pink heads. So this is a mixture of uh, upper house and yellow. So we'll do a couple of heads here. I have got a nice little fan brush. It's an old fan brush, this one, so all the writing's gone off. It was a Terry Harrison. And I think it was originally originally used for um, acrylic, but I use it from the watercolour and I love it. And you just dab it in a bit of green paint not too thick not too thick and just dab the ends and then then we can just dab a wee bit of texture on there now that's a little bit on the dark side so these little just little splodgy areas uh, 
Так. I don't want to put a couple of very fancy, yeah. And everyone's house needs a television. So there's an old aerial there. And now to put the telegraph poles in, I like to do it upside down. So just with the very tip of your brush and confidently let's go from that one. the scene as well. I think that looks alright. I think we'll call that finished. If you wanted to you could put a little a couple of um, uh, downward call them now. Drains, drain pipes. Drain pipes. I have to forgive me, sometimes I have a bit of a mental block about what I'm saying, it's my age. So, you know what, I'm not going to do any more. I think that's all right. I'd be quite happy with that on my wall. So, thank you for watching once again and uh, happy painting.